Hello and welcome out to the Dice Tower. I'm Wendy Yee. I'm Chris Yee. And today we are going to be reviewing Ecosystem Coral Reef. This is a uh, small box card drafting game. In fact, when we saw the picture on Board Game Geek, I thought it was going to be a way bigger box. Yep. So there's so much detail and stuff in the in the picture. It's a beautiful cover. It is from Genius Games, and I tend to uh, like a lot about what Genius Games does. They make very scientific kind of or or um, nat you know, nature kind of based games, but put a lot of science and, and knowledge behind it. So I was excited to check this one out. Wendy, I'm show gonna show us you how, how to play. play. It. Core Reef is a light card drafting game where you have a hand of cards. You're going to take one, place it in your 4x5 grid, anywhere adjacent to somewhere else you've placed, pass along those cards. You will then gain a new hand of cards, and then you will once again continue forward with that, uh, placing another card and passing them along until you have no more cards in hand. You do that twice. So there's going to be two hands of 10 cards, which is a 24, sorry, a 20 card grid. Um, and then you're going to go ahead and score up everything based on where it's placed. The scoring and the card uh, objectives are basically all over here on this player aid, um, and every animal does something different, and it's relatively thematic. For example, coral is at the bottom of the ocean. It only scores if it's at the bottom because it grows on the ground. Sharks like to be around fish. Eels also like to be around fish. Um, Plankton may score just based on majority, depending on how many you have versus everybody else. So there's a whole variety of things uh, thematically in how it scores, and everything's over here that you need to know. So after you add up all those points, the person with the most wins. So as you can see, pretty easy card drafting game. Beautiful art. Uh, I really like the, the look of it a lot. It comes with a really great player aid as well. The fact that it explains every card in great detail, in not great detail, but in just the right amount of detail. They don't have questions on how things score. Sure, it's very like King Domino meets Sushi Go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the, yeah, it's, it's Sushi Go drafting, but with the grid. Mm -hmm. And I like that. There's a lot of competing objectives of, ooh, I want all of these things together, except for the fact that I want, you know, and that's great. I love those types of choices in games. Spatial puzzles are really fun to me. Being mm -hmm. able to lay that stuff out and watch it as it progresses and grows and like, ooh, I hope I get the perfect card for here. Oh, I didn't get it, but it's okay because this other card here will score a ton and it's awesome. It's funny because you would look at it and say like, well, obviously you just want to put all the coral like on the bottom together. And you're like, yeah, that's an obvious choice. Until you get a hand of cards and you go, but what about, <laughs> and that's great. That right. is great when a, a game this simple has that type of, those types of moments where you say, but I want three of these seven cards. Like, I want all of them right now. <laughs> that's good. It is good, it is good. And this is rated for eight years old and older. Um, and our daughter being seven has played it and she did mostly fine with it. She did, she did. She's a she's a gamer. We've she's a gamer, yeah. yeah. So she's she's definitely, so I think that, that eight mark is, it's a good mark for a general. I think the part that tripped her up was these cards here. So, the explanation of all of the cards are not written on the actual card, but they're instead in this like heavy text player aid on the side. And so I look at the turtle and I don't remember what the turtle does. Instead, I have to look up constantly. So when you start with 10 cards in hand, you say, okay, I have two plankton. What do plankton do again? Okay, I have two turtles. What do turtles do again? I have a whale. What does a whale do again? Like, I just definitely feel like at the beginning of the game, it's a little overwhelming, especially for that younger age group. Um, I wish that they did something more like Sushi Go, where you had it, the scoring, on the bottom of the card. I think most games would have, would have some different way of doing the symbology. They have symbols in the bottom left corner of the type of thing it is, whether it's mm -hmm. a predator, um... Or, you know, the three different classes, like fish. A grouper big, big, or something. Yeah. Um, I've completely forgotten the science behind it, so <laughs> big fail, Genius Games. Good going. <laughs> now that's on me. But I'm sure it's in the rulebook. It, it is uh, clearly right in front of me, but I want to just talk a little more naturally. I think the symbology in the cards is very wrong, right? Like, this is the type of thing that it is, but there's no symbol on, like you said, how does it score, you know, one times number of plankton or something like that, you know... Uh, score five points if adjacent to these things, score mm -hmm. two points per thing in row. That symbology should be on the card. Also, I think that each card, as beautifully illustrated as it is, should have a little symbol for turtle in the top corner. Yeah. So you should have the group, you should have, there should be a symbol for the exact type of animal and then how that scores 
and you can use those animal symbols in the scoring iconography. Right, because I tend to fan out my cards this way, and I would rather just be able to see in the indexes here, mm -hmm. just like with playing cards. I want an index, I guess, is one of the... Instead of having to kind of flip through and say, ah, oh, I got a shark. Yeah. That, and that's too bad, because that's, that's a, a little production complaint, a little complaint that I have on what I think is otherwise a really solid, good, approachable weight game. Great art. Mm -hmm. uh, does teach a little bit about the interactions of marine ecosystems. And yeah. that's great. Yeah, it's got some educationalness. Um, so I, talking about final scores here, because I think that we've covered the base of the game. There's not a lot to it. For a light card game, I think that this is fun. It's got some cool uh, spatial elements to it, as well as the educational side. I think that you can learn those animals after just a few games so that you'll then remember. I do that with other simple card games like this. I just remember what they do. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give this a 7. I am going to recommend it um, with a caveat that I, I think that sticking at that 8 and above I think will be important and also multiple plays. So if you're hoping to play this multiple times, um, I think that this, I think that it's fun and I do enjoy the system. I also think that the two player mode is not complicated. You literally just have a, a third kind of bot player and you're, you're drafting your three hands of cards, but you're just throwing them one extra card every round randomly and they score for a, one of the cards that does a majority's thing. Right, just uh, it's very simple. A lot of plankton, not a lot of plankton. That's not bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I'm I'm giving this one a seven point five because I I really am charmed by this. the The theming on it, the fact that the theming works with every card mechanically, is is just such a great idea. I love it. And and not all of the choices are obvious. Especially one of the cards makes you eat one of your cards at end game scoring, and you say, "But they're all so perfect." But also that card is worth a lot of points. Mm -hmm. So I'm okay with that. I think that's great. I think that, that there's so much good in here. So uh, it could even be maybe a notch higher if I, if I thought that they had done a little bit better job with the... With, with the, the design the, layout. Yeah, exactly. The graphical design. I think that's a big miss. The player rate is solid, though. The scoring pad is solid. I just wish that it were more easily digestible uh, and presentable like krill. Tasty, tasty, delicious krill. So mm. thanks for coming by. Another Dice Tower review where we discuss the differences between plankton and krill and, and how good they are. But really, I want to go eat some shrimp now. Oh, shrimp. Let's well, anyways, shrimp. I'm Wendy Yee. I'm Chris Yee. Have fun eating shrimp. <laughs>